May 10th, 2012 meeting of the Central Planning Board. Uh, the first item then is to accept the agenda. Um, well, we're going to try to um, amend it by putting on the support letter for that. Uh, okay. Go has it set to record his tape. Okay, so we will put that under eight thir at 8.30? Sounds good. Under old business? Yeah. New business? Okay. New business. So with that modification, do we need, I need a motion? I'm so moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Super, thank you. First item on the agenda <coughs> is a special permit accessory dwelling unit for Fortify Mordecai Lincoln Road. The applicant owner of the Hales, trustees of the Realty Trust, will also, in conjunction with that, do a Form A for the same site. Michael, introduce yourself. Good evening. I'm Attorney Michael Hayes, and I represent uh, Road Hale, who are the trustees of the His original plan when he purchased it was to, to tear that house down and, and keep the land as a reserve for uh, future septic needs. But the more, when he got inside the house and saw that it, the condition was a little better than he thought it was, then he, he uh, changed his plans and it, he asked that the, uh, uh, that I present this accessory dwelling special permit request. So I'd like to just real quick, um, uh, run through uh, what the existing conditions are out there uh, at 41 Mordecai Lincoln. Uh, the lot is 21,700 square feet in the frontage. He is a, uh, uh, his home there. The 37 Mordecai Lincoln also has 108 feet of frontage and 31,645 square feet of land. It's a two bedroom house. Uh, this uh, house that uh, 41 is um, he also, uh, pending the uh, hope for approval of this board, uh, and it's in your package uh, in his own plan, uh, he hopes to uh, build a, a three-bay garage and, and a small addition to his house on 41 Mordecai <coughs> Lincoln. That addition in garage will uh, uh, go over the existing uh, lot line. Mm -hmm. So that's why uh, pending the approval of the board, uh, we have done the Form A plan and, and just combined both lots on that Form A plan. Uh, without that addition, which again is, is in your plan, is for a garage on um, a uh, utility room uh, and will add to, uh, to uh, the existing home uh, and turn the current garage into a future living room. Uh, Providing that work being done, the livable area in that home is um, 3,719 square feet. Uh, with the proposed uh, work to be done, it would become 4,451 square feet. So the, the percentages that under the bylaw currently, um, the, the smaller home of 37 is 1,399 square feet. So as it exists now, the uh, smaller home or what we hope will be the accessory dwelling is 37.6% of the square footage of the main home. And uh, with the proposed uh, new addition and uh, garage, the uh, uh, living area of the 41 Mordecai Lincoln will uh, be 4451 and it would then mean the accessory dwelling would be 31.4%. Part of the process, uh, in, in, in this process, and with comments from Jennifer at the Board of Health is uh, septic concerns. Uh, there has been a design uh, and ready to be submitted um, uh, an addition, a, a uh, new six bedroom septic system, which is what Jennifer's looking for. Um, and uh, again, that is, been designed and uh, will be submitted pending uh, the hope for approval of the board. Um, finally, if, uh, if, if, if the board pleases, I'd like to just go 
go through the, the uh, special permits procedures and conditions in the bylaw and address each, each one? Or would that be appropriate? Sure. Okay. Um, under 530.2, paragraph A, the accessory dwellings shall be complete, separate housekeeping units that function as separate units from the primary structure or dwelling. And there is, as you can see in the plans, there's no proposed changes to the existing 37 Mordecai Lincoln, which is the smaller two bedroom home that will be a separate uh, entity from, from the main dwelling, which is currently known as 41 Mordecai Lincoln. Uh, uh, subparagraph B uh, is not applicable, I don't believe, because uh, this is not uh, create, uh, the, there's no accessory dwelling proposed created within an existing structure or a structure used for business purposes. So I don't think that applies. Uh, only one, number C, only one accessory dwelling unit shall be created within the single family house or on a lot containing the single family house. Again, there's only one uh, proposal and that is for the smaller or 37 more Lincoln to become the accessory dwelling. D. Um, it requires that in, in a detached structure uh, that uh, it compli complies with all setback requirements. Uh, it does, and, and both dwellings do by way, however, of the average setback uh, rule within our bylaw. Um, so th they both are conforming uh, as far as setback. And the, uh, again, we're not gonna be adding any uh, any additional proposal on the existing home, the garage is going away from the street, and I've reviewed the plan with Neil, and uh, Neil does not feel that there's any need for any uh, building special permit that he can um, he can approve the building permit uh, upon its uh, <coughs> submission again, pending approval of, of this board. So. Uh, E, the accessory dwelling <coughs> shall be designed so that the appearances of the building remains unchanged as much as feasible. Uh, there is really no change other than, you know, some lipstick on the building to uh, the smaller accessory dwelling. Uh, there'll be nothing other than, you know, clean it up, contain it up, and then fix it up. Uh, no structural change. Uh, so we believe we meet that requirement. And again, F, uh, I've already gone through that when complete, pending this board's approval, um, uh, the accessory dwelling will be uh, well under the 40% limit under sub uh, paragraph F. And uh, G, at least two private off-street parking spaces shall be available. We, uh, there's plenty of parking on the lot and uh, proposed, uh, so we feel that that is not an issue. Eight, uh, the design and size of the accessory dwelling shall conform to all applicable standards in the building, plumbing, electrical, mechanical, etc., uh, and meet all of the bylaws. And again, we are very concerned with uh, the Board of Health, and we will comply with that pending approval and uh, with the such design. And, and, and they would, there, again, there's work proposed uh, on the uh, 41 Mordecai Lincoln, and there's uh, cleanup work done on, being done at 37. And uh, finally, that uh, adequate provision shall be made for the disposal of sewage. Again, if we have a six bedroom Title V CC design and uh, ready to be submitted if we get the accessory dwelling. And uh, with me tonight is uh, Rick Anastas, who uh, works for uh, Mr. Hale and uh, is in charge of his properties. And, and, uh, uh, and uh, says Will Hale is left for. Uh, a business trip yesterday, um, and he cannot be with us tonight. So, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Sure, and thank you. Ask the board to approve it. Thank you, Laura. Uh, it's a um, kind of an interesting application. The way it it works, I'm going to kind of maybe approach it a little bit differently from the way Mike did. But the proposal is to add on to is this, this is number 41 yeah. over here to um, add on to 41 when the addition is done 
there'll be a new garage and some um, other changes. The existing garage is going to be converted to uh, living space. And that addition is going to go over the property line, which effectively combines the two properties as one lot. But, you know, you're going to be doing that as a formal, you know, form A endorsement anyway. And once you do that, you can't have two houses on a lot, but you can do it by the accessory dwelling method. So it kind of, um, I think, fits very nicely with that. Um, the only comment that we <coughs> received that was really of any substance was from the Board of Health, and I think they would like to have a condition about the septic system because the, uh, the existing system for um, number 41 is only for a two-bedroom house because that's what the records had shown. So they really want to see that, mm -hmm. at least, you know, for that one, the four-bedroom, and since it's going to serve both, you know, for the six. Do we know what the status of the existing septic system for the larger house is? I mean, is it cut Title V compliant now? I don't believe so. I believe it's a um, it's a school. Looks like it's an older one, although there is a um, uh, I think big storage tank. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the leaching. I'm sorry. Uh, she says indication. there's a 1994 permit for installation <coughs> of a 1,500 gallon septic tank. Okay, and I'm probably should be clearer, but I'm not. Uh, in terms of what you can do within the river front area, the buffer zones that are shown, that kind of thing. Is that the, the location of the, of the new septic system, Mike, is that going to be in, in any of these no, sort of sensitive areas? So it's going to be up front, pretty There's far a little, up front. Um, a rectangle of dashed lines on the left hand side. Oh, this thing that says SAS? Yeah. 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 Oh. I think so it, it counts as 100. Yep. And the, um, the only other, the only work proposed or that's being under discussion down there, uh, because uh, again, Country's Pond is at the bottom of the hill behind the property, would be perhaps some uh, vista pruning, but uh, that would be under the auspices of the Conservation Commission. But uh, there's no work proposed at this point within, within the uh, Country's Park. Actually, you know, that's supposed to be a 200 foot from the riverfront area. Yeah. So I'm not sure if that's um, if that's a misprint or a 200. Yes. So the work would be, you know, I think the con conservation commission would have to look yeah. at it. Yeah. But where it's a septic system, I mean, I think they'll, you know, they won't really want to hold that up unless. Uh, okay. Because you know, yeah. the 200 foot spread out way out in the road. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's a conditionable thing. Oh sure. Yeah. <coughs> Nico. Um, is that uh, the area where the proposed new system is going in, Mike? Is that going to be is that is that currently grass? Is that currently a, a grassy yes. lawn? Yes. Okay. Um, the um, I think Laura answered my question. I was a little confused at first. The, the reason the reason for combining the lots is because the owner wants the garage space addition and needs to do it this way as opposed to keeping them as two separate units. Is that correct? Yes, and and. and uh, Again, his, his plans changed because he was originally was just going to tear the house down and build a septic system where the house is. Uh, but uh, upon further reflection, he felt it a um, a, a a more substantial uh, compound would, would be more to his liking. So um, the the average setback you're talking about is based on the other dwellings on either side, the, either side of them. Okay. And the um, the uh, in terms of those setbacks, uh, the only thing I was looking at, and you may still comply, but is the that little corner? If you look at the 15 foot line, um, where the garage, the, the proposed garage attaches to the front of the new house, there's mm -hmm. that little triangle that kind of juts out over that. Is that already calculated into that average setback, or is that, that sort of Neil said? Good enough. You're heading that direction away from it. Well, yeah, that corner is complies with the average setback. Does, so okay. your proposed garage will actually be a foot or two behind it right. from where it starts. It's not going to start right at the point of uh, a okay. 90 degree point of the building. It's going to start behind it. And so I think that's what went into Neil's. Okay, that's, thinking uh, I just want to make yeah. sure you didn't need to cut that jut it along the line. But right. as long as it complies with the average, it's fine. Uh, I think that's all I have. Yeah, I think 
that answers all my questions. I was wondering about the um, riverfront area, but that's a con con issue, so. Okay. All my questions have been answered. Huh? No, I'm good. I jumped in early. No, not to worry. <laughs> and I am all set. Um, Mike, I just wanted to ask you before I pass on the motion, or if, you know, assuming the board is ready for it, um, what did you say was the area of the accessory dwelling? Because in the assessor's records it says 1,200 square feet, and you had some other number. Um, we had calculated the, the, the livable area. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, 1,399. Okay. Okay. That's what the engineer has calculated. <coughs> it's under the 40% now, even before you built it. Right. So it's not, we don't even no. make it conditional upon no. building. Procedurally, should we do the Form A first, or we should do the accessory dwelling? Well, I I popped in the Form A as a condition, but you can do it either way. I mean, I think it, it makes sense to do the Form A first, too. Okay. Yes. Because if you don't have the Form A, then you have no... Right. So... Do you want to make a motion? And I have it right. I'll endorse and it's not right. For me for, uh, I missed my cue. Motor Pat Lincoln Road on 41 and 37. Motor Pat Lincoln Road and Sister Mass. Now there was the discussion about the condition for the uh, the septic. Does that go in the form A? That goes in the. Yeah, we can't condition, condition the form A. So what we'll do is we'll vote the form A. And if the form A is approved, then in effect we'll then we'll go with the special permit for the accessory within the conditions there. Okay. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We now have a form A. Oh, we will yeah. proceed to the accessory dwelling. Um, just watch in there. Um, I think the percent was with a 1399. 37.6. Okay, so say 38. Oh, with the existing or the proposed? The proposed. The proposed, it would be 31.4. Okay, 31, okay. Okay. Yeah. You might have to <coughs> change if I say something about um, it being a I move to make the following findings of fact. Number one, on April 9, 2012, the owner of the property applied for a special permit for an accessory dwelling. Number two, the plans submitted with the application are a Mordecai Lincoln Road floor plan and the A&R plan of land at 41, <coughs> 41 Mordecai Lincoln Road, Sidlip Mass, Assessor's Lot 12426 and 27, revised dated 41612, prepared by MR Surveying Inc. for William M. Hale of 41 Mordecai Lincoln Road. Number three, <coughs> uh, already crossing the fire yet. The um, area of the house proposed yeah. for an accessory dwelling is 1,399 square feet. The floor plans show the floor area of the primary dwelling with proposed additions to be 4,451 square feet. Number four, the floor area of the accessory dwelling is 31.4% of the floor area of the primary dwelling, including the addition with the proposed first and second floor additions. This meets the area requirements of 530.2F for accessory dwellings. Five, the site plan by MR Surveying Inc. shows a driveway and three car garage for the primary dwelling and a separate garage and driveway for the accessory dwelling. This appears adequate to provide two parking spaces for the accessory dwelling and ample parking for the primary dwelling. Six, the setback is considered to meet the requirements of the bylaw because the average front setback provision of the Sidley Zoning Bylaw Section 620.4A will be used. Seven, the applicant has submitted a signed notarized statement that he will live in the primary dwelling and successors and title will live on the property. Eight, the application meets the standards of Sidley Zoning Bylaw Section 530 for an accessory dwelling special permit as long as the proposed additions to the primary dwelling are oh, constructed. Oh, you can cut that out, sorry about that. Scratch eight. Eight, eight, well, you need to stop. The application after. meets the standards of Sidley Zoning Bylaw Section 530 for an accessory dwelling special permit. Right. So you, you guys, yeah. Okay. Do I have a motion to accept the findings of fact? So moved. 
Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I move to approve the accessory dwelling special permit for 37 and 41 Mordecai Lincoln Road with the following conditions. One, the applicant shall meet all requirements of the building department, board of health, department of public works, fire department, and other town agencies. Two, the property at 41 Mordecai Lincoln Road shall contain a maximum of two dwelling units, the existing dwelling and the accessory dwelling as proposed. The footprint, number of bedrooms, and or square footage shall not be increased without prior approval of the planning board. Three, the owner of the property shall reside on the property as long as it contains an accessory dwelling unit. Four, except for any changes necessary to meet these conditions, any construction shall conform to the plans entitled Mordecai Lincoln Road Floor Plan and ANR Plan of Land at 41 Mordecai Lincoln Road Accessory Lot 12426 and 27, revised dated 41612, prepared by MR Surveying Inc. for William M. Hale, trustees submitted with this application. You can drop out. Five, the applicant will be required to update the septic system to comply with Title V per the Board of Health requirements. The system must be 20 feet from the well. <coughs> Seven or six, no on street parking shall be permitted. Seven, this special permit shall be void if it is not recorded with registry of deeds within 90 days of the date of filing with the town clerk. The owner shall provide proof of this recording to the planning board. Eight, this special permit shall lapse with, within two years of the date of its issuance unless substantial use or construction has commenced prior to that time in accordance with MGL Chapter 48, Section 9. Have a motion to accept the conditions. So moved. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Your permit is approved. Your form A is approved. I will sign the form A this evening, and you'll be available tomorrow. Yeah, I'll and then, I have to come to town hall tomorrow. Yeah, and then the, up, yeah. the filing will probably be done within a week. Great. Yep. We appreciate your time very much. And thank you all. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Thanks. Good package, thank you, Michael. We're slightly ahead of schedule, so we have the opportunity to pay bills in two minutes. Yes, yes, I do. Get, get Nico before he retires. Oh. Your timer is not a function of age anymore. <laughs> no, just means. <laughs> Six, 2012. That's anyone? Yeah, that's what. Okay. Yeah. Do we have a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any last minute additions? Any filing time? Uh, <laughs> 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 Think of a few. Uh, move Give the following bill, bill. Pay the following bills. Uh, one for four hundred twenty-six dollars and twelve cents to Community Newspaper Company for legal ads for a special permit in spot one twenty-nine South Bridge, uh, as well as this thirty-seven and 40, forty-one Mordecai and seventy-seven Border Street. Second bill for six hundred dollars and fourteen cents to Ari Logan William for reimbursement of the Planning Board's guarantee account <coughs> and engineering consultant fees for green mold. It's Bill Hogan. Oh, yeah, I just uh, <laughs> another bill for $1,000 to uh, Jack McGrath for reimbursement of the Planning Board Guarantee Account for engineering fees on uh, 556 to 568 First Parish Road subdivision. And a final bill for $227.50 to <coughs> John Hallen for reimbursement, reimbursement of the Planning Board Guarantee Account for engineering fees for the Village Business Overlay District Special Permit. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We'll sign those. Now we have four minutes. We have planning report fit in four minutes? Uh, sure. I was going to talk a little bit about Walnut Tree Hill, so I don't know. Better. Uh, just pretend you aren't listening. Uh, if you want, we can hold that to the end and then as we. Have a, yeah, you bet me. I don't know. Not yet. Four minutes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't think Anne is coming tonight, so okay. I could talk about that Tweedy Artorita study. <coughs> okay. 
I got a um, email this week from Clark Brewer, who's a member of the Cohasset Planning Board, and they're very interested in getting some traffic improvements on Route 3A because of all of the development that's taken place there. That they, they've, they've got, um, I think they've got a, a wind turbine there someplace. Um, they've had uh, the Avalon development, they've got the um, development of the train station, and traffic flow there is, is getting jammed up, and they're looking at ways to try to streamline that. When they were thinking about this study, they were doing it in the um, MAPC kind of um, meetings, and Ann Burbine suggested that they include Situate down to Henry Turner Bailey because that's kind of a difficult intersection. Henry, you, you, you know that one? That's, mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, so that's the way it's configured now. It's um, from the, the um, mixed use development where the MBTA station is in Cohasset down to Henry Turner Bailey in Situate. And they would look at ways to make those intersections safer. Um, they'd look at ways to incorporate sidewalks, um, <coughs> some kind of bike, friendly um, accommodation, you know, all those <coughs> types of things. And um, they are looking for letters from the planning board and also the board of selectmen. So I did draft a letter from the planning board. And this uh, funding is through the state transportation program, which is a very kind of slow program to get funding out of. And the way it looks now, they probably won't get it this year, but they might, they might possibly get it next year. And one of the things that would help them, they said, well, they didn't say, the state said when I talked to them, is to highlight some of the development that's happened in the, in the Situate Business District and also to just mention that there is potential for expanding that Situate Business District, which I think is not really a big stretch to say that because the Economic Development Committee has certainly discussed that among other locations on 3A, but this one's you know, maybe a little bit less um, difficult for people because it's up near, you know, there's a business district there already and it's already happening. So um, so what they might do is to just look at 3A in the context of maybe having some more business development, maybe not, but I think within the scope of this you could look at what parcels really could be developed for business, you know, which ones are, are you know, too, too uh, high a percent of wetland that, you know, could never be developed. So I think we'll, we'll get something out of this, I guess is what I'm saying. Whoops. Um, so I have a draft, and maybe you could um, just pass that down. This is just a letter of support for the application. Right? It's just a letter of support. And um, I think it would be appropriate for you to take a vote to support it if you, you know, feel like you, you can support it. Yeah, I talked briefly to Ian. I'd ask Ann Burbine if her schedule permitted, to, you know, maybe she might want to come down and just talk to this. but. Um, in effect, I had talked with her previous uh, on the on draft letter before it was formally sent out uh, looking for the support. And in effect, what it does is situate is the, I would pre prefer to think of the head end of this area, the study that they're looking at on it. And I think that it makes sense to have situate involved in, in part of the review to make sure that whatever we do is consistent with what they're looking to do. And there, I think there's an opportunity to have what we're looking to do included in their planning. So I had suggested that we come back up and uh, write, uh, write a letter to that to the support of, of that uh, of the effort. So that this is a draft. Looks good to me. Okay. Yeah. I have no problem at all with it. So I need to. Why don't we formally vote a motion to move to send this letter? I was written. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 You want me to sign one of these, or do you have an original, or does it matter? Uh, I, I just have draft written on this one, so I'll get you an original. Oh. Actually, at the end of the meeting, I can okay. print one out. You do that, and I will be happy to sign it. Okay. Which brings us to exactly 8 o'clock. <coughs> and the next item on the agenda is Site Plan Administrative Review for 17 New Driftway. The purpose is to discuss changing the ice house conditions. Very fortunate to have, <coughs> to have design review with us tonight. Thank you for coming. What I may ask um, 
while you guys are setting up is maybe to kind of give us an over, just kind of a discussion on what took place at the design review, which kind of set the stage for the activities, what I call their homework, and then we can come back and hear from them, okay. if that works for you. Um, well, we were asked to take a look at the ICAR because we, I mean, originally when we reviewed it, um, we talked about doing it with shingles, um, the venue, and it came out in a more or less just um, generic um, country design without a lot of work done to it. Uh, so we got together, I think it was last week, and kind of what we came up with, I'm not sure if we received any of the sketches. Yeah, we've been, this, this, Mike's memo and the sketches have been passed around oh, to okay. all the board members. Yep. Um, well, what we talked about is more, um, the purpose was to hide the, there's some mechanical equipment on the rooftop, and we were trying to think of a way to kind of camouflage um, the mechanical units, but also make it aesthetically pleasing. Um, and also the, the, the wall when we drive by, the district decided to do, is kind of use a blank um, wall. So we were trying to come up with different ideas to kind of break it up. So we came up with, um, you know, doing a few, break up the wall with um, canopies on the side and the front. And also along the top to kind of enclose the mechanical units or um, icon with a blue wall. Kind of a fence, but they could be um, sort of um, thought to be um, canvas um, enclosure around it. Um, we discussed doing some stone to get the size of the back on that. Um, but then as we talked about it, it made sense. It sounded like that wasn't going to be a possibility. It was just really not the design of the building. <coughs> so I, mean, I think we were going to go back and just look at it, but we didn't know what that was done. I happened to attend it. I think it was it was a good working discussion. I think there was a lot of a lot of give and take and a lot of a lot of good ideas in a couple of mine. <laughs> so we, we took the sketch and we uh, we met with uh, Dorchester Arnie. Why don't we just make, why don't you introduce yeah. yourself because if we are we're currently being taped. I'm Don Spradlin. Okay. Porter Road. Thank you, Dan. And we uh, took the sketches that the design review had uh, come up with, and we uh, had a representative of the owner of the company came down. <coughs> it was very helpful, and uh, pretty much imitated uh, what, what was in the uh, design, which was um, one of the challenges was how to appear on the, in the ice house. And, uh, came up with a, you know, a, a, a great solution. And um, what it does is it provides the awning effect, but also a, the screening, uh, you know, on the top. Um, and this screening would be um, on all, all sides. The awning would be, as you see it pictorially in the picture, uh, but the screening is actually on the opposite side uh, as well. And what, this is a very high quality material uh, that's being proposed. It's um, a, you know, a marine you know, grade, um, very durable. Um, and what it allows us to do also on the other side where the screening is, it has a grommet fashion attaching to posts in the three different sections of it would allow us to um, detach one of them to get access to the equipment if we ever had to uh, you know, service <coughs> the equipment. So rather than having a, you know, a gate or something up there, we're able to do it with the actual uh, you know, material. Also, from time to time, the material might be, um, you know, some kind of painting or whatever down the road. So, you know, you just uh, simply remove it. So we have a little bit more uh, sort of a nautical, uh, you know, a nautical look. Um, if I could describe to you Manufacture awnings, this is a, a, on a quotation, that are the same size as the existing awning and include integrated vertical posts that project above the roof. Um, 
note that the existing awning will need to be modified to include the vertical posts as well. The awnings will be two feet high and project four feet, same as the existing front lawn. The vertical posts will project 36 inches above the roof, and there will be and they will be 32 inches, 32 inch high screen panels that are mounted in a banner like uh, between the posts. The awning frame and the posts will be attached to the building using the method and hardware that the building manufacturer provides. And what this is, this is a stainless steel bolts, bolts with an inside plate. We would be both, we would order those from the manufacturer so that we would adhere to the same kind of uh, method as they did on putting the front awning on. Uh, we would use the same, uh, the same hardware. Um, and this is available, you know, in a, uh, a sunbrella, what they call sunbrella view or type B uh, mesh. And then there's a quote here again, it's a screens for the third side. You can see maybe that's separate, but we would do, be doing the same kind of screening uh, with the banner like approach for the uh, for the opposite side. So I mean I think I, I, I was pleased when I got it back and you can't tell 100% from you know a rendition like this but I felt that color wise and everything it was attractive it was crisp and clean and it gave the right kind of screening that would be needed to uh, to offset the, the equipment and it's feasible. It's something that we're, we we would be able to do, uh, which was uh, uh, which was always the challenge. So uh, that's where we are, you know, so far with it. And uh, it fits, uh, you know, it's from a budget point of view, it's a little bit of a stretch. But um, you know, I want to do it uh, because I want to see it, uh, you know, uh, it play as well. But again, we want to use only the best, uh, you know, of products uh, or the material that. We <coughs> Super. Uh, there were some other issues, but I tried to match pretty much as much as I could to this sketch, um, you know, as to what to get that kind of an effect with the banner and the awning as well. Okay. Um. This would allow us also with the awning, it would allow us to put lighting <coughs> underneath the awning to light up the sidewalk, you know, at night. In on both sides. On, on no, just you're, that you're one side. Are you going to paint the structure a different color? That, I, I'm leaving that, I, I want you to see it as is okay. first, because number one, we've had a lot of compliments already about the color mm -hmm. as it is, and that being positive, and I wanted you to take a look at it with the awning, because, you know, our first concern was screening the equipment, and, uh, you know, that, that's what I looked upon as the priority here, okay. um, and getting away, making a little bit more of the corridor uh, feeling, uh, you know, roof, I mean, that is... That is, th those are the sort of the situate colors. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, that, that's where I'm at with it, you know, so far. And the blue, the blue awning seems to work uh, well versus some of the other colors that are available. Good, thank you. Yeah. I, I saw you guys huddling over there. We got two, two design reviewers. <laughs> yes, uh, I, I'm Hal Stokes. Uh, I apologize for being late for the hearing, but um, I, I am on the design review committee too, so Laura and I were just talking. Um, I think that <coughs> the uh, the color scheme was, uh, you know, I, I thought uh, that you might appear uh, with a couple of um, ideas for different color schemes that um, could be um, shown tonight. And um, I thought that was kind of how we left it. So. Um, I, um, I would be interested in, in discussing changing or modifying the color scheme that is presented here in this sketch to be something that might um, be a little less um, harsh. There was some talk at our meeting, I think, about, the, about um, <clears throat> matching or if not directly matching, being in the vein of, um, in this, photo that we have here, we don't see a utility building that's sort of adjacent to this, kind of behind um, behind um, the view that you see here. And that had a slightly more of a taupey color or something like that. Right. 
and uh, that was one of the color schemes that you introduced uh, in our, at our uh, session. And, I, um, and, and we also even talked about possibly um, taking that lower portion, which is maybe 30 inches off the pavement there, and <clears throat> making that a slightly, maybe complementary, but in the same vein, but a little darker or something. Right. I know we can't do the, 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 the stone, but maybe right. just, again, to try to break up the well, stance of the wall. It gets us right back to this. Yeah. We, 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 I feel we will segue <coughs> into this, and I wanted you just to see it as is before we did that. Uh, it, I tried to have actual photos or whatever, showing some color combinations, but uh, it wasn't successful, okay, getting them because it seems like, you know, the person's software, and even, even the fellow, the the even the fellow at, um, to do like this the from the awning company so said it was very difficult to superimpose these colors mm -hmm. on there and everything. Well, so I thought we'd have to go by the swatches, uh, knowing gray, what the combinations we've already decided on. Oh, okay. And this would be for the yeah, And it has a slight perforation to it. Right. Yeah. That, would, that would just yeah. be on the top. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe the board wants to see that too. Yeah. I'm not sure if we would want to get. Yeah, there was some material. I'm not sure if does the board want to get into that deep level of detail. There was a, there's a material on the, there's a material on the top. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's, it has uh, these very, very tiny little holes in it. Yeah. Sort of the wind on the top. That's part. a screen. Yeah. That's one of my questions. Mm -hmm. right. The screen. And these are the colors that it comes in. Okay. okay. The navy, the green, the taupe, and the gray. There were a couple of other colors, but they weren't in this book. But they were just more variations on the gray or the taupe. Do you by any chance have the color of the, of the that big sample you had at the meeting? Yeah, we have that. We have that. That would be helpful because that's the color of the dance studio. It's a, that's actually a shade of beige. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Is this, is this a cotton or a corduroy nylon? If you, if you know. So it's some raw. So it's acrylic. Okay. <laughs> Uh, this is the stuff that you know the good yeah, the good is, stuff they use on boats. <laughs> this is shaker beige. Oh yeah, thank you. Is that the that's the color of the that's the color of the dance duo. Well, that's and that is um, that's mm -hmm. definitely that's a darker shade than what you currently have it painted. Uh, you know the current paint job on on the unit. So. Oh yeah, that's dark yeah. white. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now we had picked. Yeah, we had picked. Uh, yeah, that's the HC. Same the paint that's on the building. Now, what, what what there was one that we had to complement that. Well, it, the, when we were looking at the other colors, um, either do taupe or green. We were thinking of maybe not necessarily depends on whatever color we decided on whether it have a little bit more gray. Uh, um, matching or the, the leaves behind there, kind of sucking it into the woods a little bit. Well, as long as the leaves are out. Yeah. But there are some evergreens on site too. Mm -hmm. as long as yeah, the other thing about the, this fabric, right. if you only got those four, you can work with it. Right. too expensive. They can even go with like seasonal colors. Mm, I think it's more expensive than that. Right. Right. You, you do it once and you make the color. Yeah. I'm not sure how to best coordinate this whole meeting here. Yeah. Right. We can come right. up. Maybe everybody could come suggest, up. Um, can just, maybe we can, we, I'm going to suggest maybe we all just gather around the table and then we can, that may work out better. I don't know from a cable standpoint whether that works, but right. at least it puts us all in, in, in that thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So why don't we, why don't we come down? And we yeah. Sure. And one of the questions that I have, at least for the board, before we go too far, is does conceptually this, this design make sense? I think it does so long as the colors look right. I mean, I think the idea was to make it look less sort of fast food-like and a little bit more disappear into the landscape, which I know we've given you some examples of other ones we've seen around the country, different pictures, and a lot of them use you know, strictly earth tones and things like that that kind of uh, blend it into the background a little bit. You know, the stark white and the bright blue really kind of screams fast food. And I know even the Dunkin' Donuts across the street, which obviously is fast food, there was some effort put into 
making it look a little bit more residential anyway. And since this is such a prominent location when you come down the street, I think the more we can do to subdue it a little bit. I think the, um, the building in the background is like a good example of, you know, if you match something a little more along those lines, it'll kind of blend with the, the rest of it a little bit better. So, so I think painting the building is critical. I like the design of the awning and everything. If we get the colors right, I think it would work great. And I like the screen and everything. And it seems like a good solution. Yeah, I, think that, that, I think that works out well. So I think if we just gather and we pick out the colors, then I think that we, we would. <coughs> just yeah. the one thing, kind of a nitpicky thing on the canopy. Um, it shows like a scallop, and we were thinking more just like a string. Exactly. Thank okay. you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Turn yeah. the words from my mouth. Okay. And that was discussed, but we didn't. We didn't write we it didn't down. We didn't come but I guess. to a decision. Yeah. Which it's scallop was, versus a it's straight, it's straight? It's a little. It's a little busy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a little schlocky. Mm -hmm. This the question, uh, Mrs. Bradley, oh. came up over the the scallop wow. edge as opposed right. to a straight edge. Here, was there any? Um, the reason why we couldn't do a straight edge? Okay. I'm sure straight edge is feasible. Probably easier. Yeah. Uh -huh. The other question I had, is it possible to wrap the awnings together at this corner so that it looks like a uh, basically a mansard roof? At a 45. So that it's uh, yeah. mitered, so that essentially. Yeah. yeah, so that they're mitered. Well, I, I wanted so to raise hip, that question too. It's a hip roof at that corner. As we note in Mr. Um, in our chairman's uh, sketch. He didn't bring the corners together. He had two separate awnings. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think we were talking about keeping the open. Well, that was that, that was one approach yes, and then and then your um, <coughs> and then whoever did this yeah, design for you joined them together yeah. to make it more <coughs> mansard yeah. like Mr. Bowles. Make it it's, it's I'm not sure it's a and so I'm not sure if uh, what the actual construction will be, and I don't know if that would actually. I would think that if it was put together, then you would have a balloon factor. Well, uh, yeah, I just don't know if they can get a you know member yeah, out to support that. I agree, that's probably the act, uh, issue to get uh, one of these supporting struts. Well, it looks and, uh, like it's actually two. Is not like. Are you talking about? The yeah, one see. Because it looks like there's just. Well, they filled that in with color, but I don't know whether. Well, I think you've got ends on those on those yeah. triangular <laughs> prism shapes, but the ends don't join. So you've still got two two triangles, two separate ones. Prism, right. If that's a, if that's an lines. important issue, maybe that can be answered. Um, you, we're working with uh, important to me, and it, it probably cuts down on the cost the, not the the, the, for the, the for a forty five. I think if it can be done without. A big expense that would make sense, but I think it's not a critical piece yeah. of it. It'd be, a little, it'd be a little sleeker, but yeah. You know, on the awnings, we're talking about these are going to go all the way around the building. The the, band, the awning part would be on the two sides, the front, and what you see there to, the, on the street. Okay. And then the other side would be uh, along the other property. On the other side would be the. Uh, the screening. So, so you're only going to have the um, screening on four sides, awning screening on two. Screening on four sides, awning on two. Right. Yeah, I mean that that to me is going to look a little uh, not the best, I guess. When I think about, it. especially on the side, if you're looking for a Duval dance studio, it's going to look kind of half done. I'm, I'm not so concerned about the back side. I don't think there's a neighbor there that looks right at it. Is there? Yeah. Sort of the trees. And Actually, things? there is. Well, there is. There, there, is, there is a neighbor, there is a neighbor screening screening off here. over here. I mean, if you've got just two. Roofs hanging off of two sides, it's going to look half done. It's well, that's no big deal. It's no problem. Okay. I mean, I guess it would, to me, it would make more sense to have it uniform all the way around. Because yeah. would that was a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was there is an issue on the third well, side, the side, on the fourth you side. You can't really do it. Yeah. yeah it's, it's designed to be and a drive part of the building. This, this, what happens is this, the sidewalk and right. the access is along the front. It's got a very narrow piece in the back that, <coughs> that gives them a concrete slab that access the, the equipment in the back. Yeah. Some of that equipment in the back is overhanging the roof. It yeah. sticks out. Plus we have the, the possibility of boats, lots of boats park. coming in around there. So we, I really didn't want anything protruding. Right, if you take four building. feet off the back, you're not going to have a driveway left behind that. Yeah. So you're talking about the, the back, the long back side anyway, but what about the... The end is basic development. There's equipment there. There's, 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 there's parking. There's, there's equipment here. That's where the equipment... Comes back down on the back of the building. 
I'm yeah, there's soft, equipment. Do you have the right. angle on that? Okay. Okay. I don't have the, don't the, have the, the picture. The old yeah. pictures yeah. you have up and it comes down. There's all this stuff. Yeah, it comes down. So you're going to need to have, so you have that as well as the access tool. Well, that's too bad. Is there sidewalk back there? Is there sidewalk back here? I think there's about a foot on There's a couple feet. there is. There's a couple feet because the door is on that. It's not like a. It's not as wide as the front side. I have a couple of things. Um, the I mean, let me say it's it's a big step forward, and I'm I'm very happy about that. So on the whole, okay. I mean, I I'm, I think we're close. But um, I was worried about the wind resistance. We answered that. I think that looks fine. The um, the the colors. Um, which I think we're still talking about. Uh, I'm not totally sold on. I agree it's the blue and white, not just situate, except that there's nothing else blue and white except for the oyster shells. So um, that, that still sort of bothers me, and I, I still would go more towards the, the earth tone concept. And if it comes in the four colors I was seeing, I, I'm, myself, I'm leaning towards the green. But um, the... The, the paint color certainly is still an issue for me. I still think we need to choose something other than white. I'd prefer to see darker earth tone. If that matches the building, I think that would be at least uh, certainly that a would help out. If we had like the awning with some form of green and then the, the base was matched that. If you had, if you like had a green awning and you had this tan that matches Duval, mm -hmm. that makes a lot of sense to me. And I would yeah. agree strongly with that bottom 30 inch base right. layer being a different darker offsetting darker brown or something small, just an offset yeah, yeah just to give you a two-tone effect that for, so there's a contrast i'm not a designer but you know i know well enough that my wife wants two different colors in the dining room for a reason yeah, yeah. Well, hello 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 <laughs> so uh is that me yeah i think that, i think that <laughs> so the uh the the to, uh, the other thing I was looking at when I saw the sketch, I, I really like the idea of, of some kind of, of texture. I understand you can't adhere things to the building, yeah. but when you look at that toning effect, even if you textured the paint, sure. faux texture or something. But again, that's I'm not worried too much about that. That came up with um, the um, the signage. Um, or we were talking last time about about because you were going to likely be not using bright white and bright blue, maybe actually having a different sign, and I don't know if you guys well, have gone anywhere with that. It would be a different sign, but we definitely would paint the, that's in a metal, that post is in a metal frame, and it's a wooden sign that sets in a metal, metal frame, and I would envision that whatever we do, perhaps with the, uh, with the, let's say the bottom portion there we were talking about would probably be the frame color. The, re the, the reason I was asking you know, was post. that we had mentioned yeah, the concept of maybe white. putting the signage on the face of the building as opposed to outside that, of it just to that's, that's going to be again uh, probably not possible because of, of trying to get those walls are eight inch thick of, of, of actually attaching yeah, it yeah yeah I, I wanted to ask yeah. that that's um, that particular sign the, um, has been there for quite some time so I, I, I would say I would say if we're going with a different look to the colors of the building I would hope that the signage the sign has match to complement but, yeah. but that's obvious I hope. the red lettering um, for example stuff like that would have to, to go to a different color. The, um, the lighting, um, on the sketch, again, there was lighting portrayed. I thought that was actually not only a good safety feature in terms of, of night use, because this is going to be open late, yeah, well, 24 we, hours. We already have lighting, actually, that um, comes with the lighthouse that's supposed to go, with, that would go underneath the awning, okay. to illuminate the awning. So at night, it would look kind of nice. So that's, uh, that's material lit up. I just wanted to know if there yeah. was going to be some lighting. Definitely going to have lighting there. down on the sidewalk there. Um, and in the front, also the front as well. The, the front and the side, yeah. the, the two facing sides. Yes. Mm -hmm. the, um, uh, the last two things, I guess, timing on this. I know mm -hmm. you're interested in the timing on it, but mm -hmm. do you have an estimate of the timing on the awning construction and installation and what? Well, I think, I think, that, I think what it is, it's, it's, it's when we place the order. And, and until we, we have the colors, then the color, then, we, then it's a go, you know. I assume, I mean, I, I kind of assume from the last meeting that we're looking at, at least your hope would be to try and approve pending construction sure. with I a, mean, with we a can agree time on frame. So some basic things here, you know, that it's okay, the design's okay of the awning, 
but we need to choose another color and we need to, you know, match that up with something appropriate on the ice house. I mean, I'll put it in writing and guarantee that we'll do it. I just, you know, I, I'd that's, like to know that's where I'm the, coming from. I think, I think in, in, in fairness to, to the applicant, I think what we do is if, if we reach closure on what this thing should look like, and it takes them a month or two months to do it. I don't want to hold them hostage to sit there and say, you get two months before you open it up. Correct. What I would do is, is, is ask Neil to issue a temporary permit that would be a temporary occupancy permit that would to a time certain. So let's say it would be 7-1. And in 7-1, then it would, all this work would have to be done to, 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 to continue with the temporary permit. If it's not done, then you would get your permanent when, when, when things are done. Right. So that sets a, this puts a stake in the ground and says, I'm going to, you know, at a time that says you can, you can meet that date and work towards that date, that you'd have a temporary permit, and to the extent that you didn't make that date, then you'd lose your temporary permit. So I think that's, then we can work out that timing. Sure. In, Anything in as far as the first thing that could be done, of course, with any decision, final decision that would be made on the uh, color, that could be done immediately, uh, and that could be the first thing that's actually accomplished um, while the awning is being um, ordered. But let's let's go through the see get some comments from the board to make sure that we're all uh, on the same page in terms of what it looks like. And then my last my last comment was 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 greenery. I <clears throat> mentioned it last time. Um, you know, I was down there today actually uh, at Duval with my daughter and uh, looking at this and, and looking at um, the, the burger bar and they were doing their spring landscaping today, so they were remulching the beds along the, the further driveway and such and. Um, if you look in the back where they're putting their new patio in, mm -hmm. um, they've got um, they've got seven or eight fairly good size six seven foot uh, evergreens mm -hmm. in pots. Yeah, they're back there. If you look on the front, they've got a few by the front door. They've got some shrubbery down at the side. You don't have any real way to do shrubbery, but um, I still think when you paint it, and if you went with browns and greens, it, it would it would be. Uh, I think that brings it into it. It brings that pleasing to bring everything yeah, together. Right. So <clears throat> whether you add a couple of more green items or whether you simply try to match what's already around there, I think those are the two things I would benefit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm happy with the design. I think it's the colors are critical to get it to kind of blend into the background mm -hmm. a little bit better. And I, I'm for sort of earth tones and going that direction. I think that. The base of the building makes a natural break already. You know, if you can't do the brick there, you could paint that like a darker color. Mm -hmm. It'll take some of the mass away from the side of it too. And I think the stark white has to go, and the bright blue has to go, and you know, get something a little more um, like the background building there. And I think if we pick the colors tonight, I mean, I'm good to go on the design. And I like the idea of getting a temporary CO out so you can get started. And I wanted to get a clarification on the. Uh, well, awning, what do you call it? The uh, scallops. 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 Flat. That, the, the reason why that was chosen was because we thought it had to be <coughs> more of a homey effect. But if, and the, the, the straight is a little bit more commercial. But I think it makes it look a little more fast food like to okay. me, like a hot dog stand kind of look or something, okay. versus the, like the scallops. Your, yeah, the scallops, yeah. yeah. This is a sale. A little, yeah, versus I'm trying to make it look a little bit more. Um, residential, I guess. Well, and if you're going for nautical, it's, uh, you know, you wouldn't see that on a boat. No, so that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Uh, that's, straight, that's, straight it's no, uh, they get tons, they have tons of uh, options. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's that mm -hmm. But I think we've got to, we do have to nail down the color. Though, I, I don't want to, I think we pick them tonight. I don't want to be guessing. I think uh, we're guessing. Pick them tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what Bob, what? Um, on the awning, basically, I think it's yeah. okay. Yeah. It's an improvement, I think, to have those ends open. And I'm not, I'm not sure why I say that. It's just a little bit less fussy, and I don't know if that's possible if those ends that you've thrown closed are, are hiding structure, for example, that comes back to the building wall. Could you clarify, Bob, what you mean by that? Um, yeah. Kind of like the side, side panels? Yeah, yeah, like that. I think that's an improvement. Improve on the ends, you've got the drive with these on the ends? Well, shows one of them open and one of them closed. Yeah. Yeah, I would, I would open them both. I'd open them just all. Just see the triangle on the end. Just have the slope coming down. Yeah. I mean, I think there's going to be a break. Oh, bad. Do you know what he's talking about? 
but no sides. Right, right, exactly. I mean, to see the structure is going to be kind of interesting. It's like spreaders on a boat or something. I mean, less material, less cost, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. Next place you are. That's why, right. right. There's some that are probably designed to be open and some yeah. that are probably designed to not be Well, yeah, open. you would see the frame of that right. just mm -hmm. here because these, all these are going to be designed and built as trusses. Yeah. One piece trusses. Yeah. Okay. Structurally, so the square. It's, it's a triangular truss, even if there's, it's not a one piece yeah. frame, right. it's a so triangular right. frame. Out of what? You would see stainless the, steel? Stainless steel. So you would see that. It's going to be lovely, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. That would be a very interesting detail. Um, I like the idea of the of matching uh, that sort of beige. I like the idea of painting the base then a darker brown. I would vote for the green uh, fabric. Uh, I would also vote to have the bollards now shown blue painted the same color as the fabric, the green. Mm -hmm. Anything but blue. Mm -hmm. Anything but blue. What about safety green? Uh, no, I don't. I don't want OSHA. Safety like, green. I like ginger green, right? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I mean, I'd like, like to. Whatever. That right there. You, or, the, or the brown of the dark bottom base layer. Yeah, yeah either Honestly, one. Probably. Just a, I mean, yeah. I, I, I generally want to match the fabric, and I think actually a little spot of color along there, <coughs> as opposed to the brown or the, or the taupe or whatever we're talking about uh, for the base walls, wouldn't be amiss. Would would be a decent little kind of spark. Um, again, we all have. Perhaps different opinions, but those are mine. And maybe we pick the awning first and then go to yeah. the awning. Yeah, I would see that. See what Eric has to say. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to put all of my trust and faith in the Architectural Review Committee and see what they suggest. <laughs> uh, and so I would say, tell us what colors you think would, would work best, and we'll go with those and where they ought to be. That's a great idea. I'd say we just confirm, so. <laughs> 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 Once we take we're, ownership we're, of it. We're, we're, we're asking, asking for a report. Tell us, <laughs> tell us what you think. Let, let, me, let me chip on first. Uh, just a couple of comments. One is is that I, I like the design. I, I like the design a lot. I think it works out well um, on it. My, my gut reaction is the same as Bob. I would probably leave that end open. Uh, on it. The fact that you're seeing the framework doesn't bother me because you, if you're underneath, you're going to see it anyway. Um, and that I would get rid of the scallops. Uh, the the, the two-tone building with the, the darker around the base. And what I would look to do is is to make the awning in the, the balliards the same color because I think that brings your eye, takes it and brings, right. you look to the middle of the two colors uh, on it. The sign, I think the sign needs a lot of help. And then the, the point that I made with, with Nico is, is that I think that we come back up and we figure out a time frame once the colors are picked as to when you can do it and then we can uh, we'll work with Neil to get you a, a temp temporary permit so that you can be operational on it. So you can generate some money to, to pay for all the stuff that we're asking you to do. Now, having said that, let's refer the problem over to the color people. Figure out whether we're earth, we're brown, we're green, we're blue, or what? Earth, wind, or fire. Uh, so I like the idea of the open canopy, too. Yeah. Um, the one thought, though, um, I think how he's going to light it, he's going to do, I think, strip fluorescence, right, underneath the canopy, so you'll be able to see those when you look through, so that might be a consideration, probably, the conduit. Yeah, that's true. You're not going to want to see that if you're driving on the road and yeah, that's see the only directly light the lights. Yeah, that's the only thought on that. Um, mm -hmm. We did talk Boy, about doing, like, gooseneck lamps down and those would um, mimic the ones on the way to the burger bar. There's the gooseneck lamps mm -hmm. that come down there. That would be nice. Um, I wouldn't mind it would seeing would, those. Would, it would, it would, it would shade yeah. everything yeah. under the under And it would be yeah. over top. And I did see an example. Like I think that, wrote um, no, no no light. we wrote nautical lights. But, but we would be top. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we talked about some sort of lighting <coughs> coming down. But where would um, they be? Well, we were talking about we could um, mount them on here. But if but trying to get it so the whole thing at night is all dark, dark under here. Yeah. yeah, for security and for uh, safety. Cause what we could do is put small returns on the end to, uh, to hide the light. On the ends of the fluorescent fixtures themselves? No, 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 on the ends of the canopy. Oh, oh I see. Just close in 
12 inches down. Oh, because the lights Blue. are the lights are way the lights up at the top. Right, right up the against the far end as high as possible. That's, so we can just close. That's probably point. a decent idea. Yeah, and it seems if the lights are attractive, then I think you would have it open. And if they're not, you've got to close off the end because it's so yeah. close to the street. If you're looking right at for us, it's going to kind of ruin the whole look. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but I mean, I. I really like the idea of fixtures out here, but I, I agree with Don that you want to make sure the sidewalk's lit at night so people don't trip over something. And, and I also think that Are the, fixtures the canopy comes out four feet. Yeah. So you're going to have yeah. to have a heck of, a, yeah. of an extended fixture to yeah. get light back yeah. under yeah. the sidewalk. And you have to be out there six feet coming back at it. Yeah, I, think I just don't know how you do it. Are the fluorescents going to extend all the way to the corners of the building? Or are they going to be so, right. I think they have several with, feet with in. Three eight footers, so the, the length of the building. Hmm, I think you'll get just the same, almost the same amount of bang for your buck if you do two eight footers and hold them, hold them in from the from the corners, and they won't they won't be as intrusive. Right. You got enough height there, so the, that light will spread. Particularly out. in your corner, because you're going to have an eight footer coming up to the end and an eight footer going the other way. Yeah, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be. You can hold them back from the corners. Yeah. It also, the, the two four-footers would give you adequate light for your sidewalk without giving you additional light that you're putting elsewhere. Also, it costs a little lot. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think you need a tremendous amount of light there anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Other than at the, where you're buying the ice, you're not going to need a ton of light. So well, I almost like it less. I mean, it is a walkway, and, yeah. you know, and there could be someone who parks there. That vehicle is and walks up there, you know, to get a bag of ice. So I just want to make sure it's safe. This is open 24 7, right? That's what I mean. So we got to be sensitive to light pollution, too, because mm -hmm. um, you know, it's going to be on when people don't want to see lights necessarily around there. So we'll really restrict the amount of, of fluorescence do, around the sides so that it's adequate but not overdone. Yeah. Do they need to be fluorescent tubes or can you? Is there any other sort of form of lighting? Well, it's just nice you can do it. With, I think with few, just few fluorescent tubes, you can get an illumination effect, you know, that's just enough, you know, without right. spotlight effect. I mean, one of the things we noted <coughs> was nautical lights, which um, I don't really know what nautical lights are, except, you know, the, those things that are, like, enclosed and they're sort of semi-dome-like and they have a yeah. little crate over the top of them. And, and then you can put the, the new compact fluorescence in there. And they, you could. They, they run very economically for a long time. So right, you could and it might enhance that you know nautical look. I just don't know whether you can adhere those things to the side of the yeah. structure. And then you'd have to run conduit to them and you can't do that internally. <coughs> so now it's an external situation. I kind of like the idea of tucking the fluorescence up under Mm -hmm. Because you won't see the conduit or boxes, or you won't even see the lights if they're see them held right. back from the right. ends. And you'll just get the glow on the canopy and the wash down the wall right. to the sidewalk. I think that's probably a decent idea. Yeah. There might be something you could do with LED lights that, you know, maybe, you know, not a whole, mm. whole string of them, but, you know, maybe um, do something energy saving like that so you, you wouldn't have to. Don't have Spend as much money on them. Mm -hmm. Also, in terms of process, don't have to do it because the last the awning is up either. It's nothing like that. We have to decide that particular thing tonight. But why don't we do the awning color? <laughs> I need to have you keep coming back to us, though. I think right. we should just finish yeah. it tonight. Yeah. Yeah. We're so yeah. close. Yeah. Yeah. I, think, I, think, I, think I think the only thing that's holding us back is, is to pick up the color of the awning yeah. Yeah. and then the color for the face of the building. That's right. Yeah. The color of the awning we know will be the color of the balance. Okay. <coughs> Like you said, it'll complement that, and then we need to get the. It's, it's probably uh, one of these beiges, this Lennox tan. Yeah. Or you need to pick three colors, right? The awning, the side wall, and then the base. Yeah. And that's, then you're good to go, right? Could you tell right. us the colors again that yeah. are yeah. acceptable with that, with yeah. that texture? I don't know. I'm not a decorator. No, no, I mean, but you had, a, you had, you had we, a, a texture. All the eight. We were looking at, before, we were looking at. That doesn't come in in the texture. The perforated. The perforated, right. right. So what comes it's just in the perforated? Those, these four colors. One, two, three, four. There were a couple of other colors, but they weren't like in this green. one. Right. They, but they were, they were off shades of taupe yeah. or um, green. Yeah, the green's nice, right? Yeah, it's not a bad color. Um, 
you know, you, you might want to let them do this in daylight and, and look at the yeah, colors of the other that. buildings, at least for the I know the color. Yeah, it's just a shade. With a gray, gray building. I would think that was a green and tan or a light Yeah, I like to put I think it's a super really good thing. And then a deeper gray. Squatch is whole gray on the face. I mean, my wife is redoing a bedroom and ended up with no, no, eight gray. swipes up on a wall. And they all no, 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 with this? With the, with, no, with the royal. They're all different. Well, I mean, I, 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 I'm very happy. Yeah. I yeah. prefer to, to, to okay. Bob more on their face. Yeah. Bob, do you have like, a, a strong preference? As to, I mean, I'm... Well, I thought, I thought we were referring it to the very yeah. That's fine with me. I would do the green. I would do the green. Because I can go to the door for the base. With the room that Duvall and the room that the adjacent... That the this space could be it's just the brown, 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 The only awning colors are the green, the blue, the, 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 the gray, and the taupe. In so. your eye line when you, when you look at those. Yeah. Yeah. Make a motion. Yeah, yeah, so moved. We have a photo that depicts the, the, um, right. um, right. the, the shed that's along, the you know, that's nearby. They look at it after the room is up and they're not, but most of the lights on, I think that's fine. And I look at the sun, I'm just like, we'll be higher in it. Bring everything back. Uh, yeah. Al, can I make a suggestion? Yeah. yeah. We're going to adjourn for five minutes, and you guys are going to pick out colors and report okay. back. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But five minutes is what you get. Right. Five, five minutes. minutes. So you, got, you got five minutes to pick out colors. Here's the adjacent. Okay, great. Can we cut the cable for five minutes? Well, uh, this is all on cable. This is funny, Bill. Yeah. So I hope you feel very, um, yeah. Yeah, it's not live, but it's going to be taped and replayed. Are you um, feeling like you want to do the master plan tonight? I think we ought to try like I want to be the year after going off that anyway. Okay, that sounds good. I've actually I'm not gonna give up on it. Same thing. Same thing. Good. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. Great. But she sees something. I watched Miami with French Buzz. Yeah. I we can the color the color of the trim too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. We could go with something that has a little more gray in there. I want to go down there and start expressing the opinion. Yeah, that was good. You, you, you and Charlton Heston, I expected to see the pipe. Slowly, but it's coming. I mean, you know, progress every day. There's a, there's a whole list of things that we So we were able to sort of target some money for the sale of our old ones so that we can do a few things to move it along. So it's exciting. Very exciting. Why not? 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 Why I don't know how I would do that. So the more it's like it's not intrusive. It's a very emotional experience going through all this stuff. Because they have to pull it out. See, at first, you're going to be making memories. You almost can't do it. It's there. Well, I mean, the building isn't disappearing in any color. If you want something to put rich, classic. It's tough. Then you go with what? Then you go with something like she said. On the uh, surf side, 25 years. Yeah, exactly. 
plenty long enough. Um, and the thing is, it was a tiny house. I mean, you saw it. It's a tiny house. It's got no basement. It's got no attic. We had the shed out back, and we had some things in the basement of the room next door. But the stuff that came out of that place, it was like the uh, old joke with the clowns and the Volkswagen. They just, in the circus, just kept coming and coming and coming and coming. So the house we moved into is actually a little bit larger, and it's got it's got a barn, and the barn's got a loft, a small barn, a small loft, but still. But it's jam. Now you can't even get in the barn. <laughs> yeah, it's awful. We'll figure it out. I think we just we were not charmed anymore by living next to the ocean. I think it should be darker. Yeah, Whether it's like more storms exactly. because the climate's going to change or... No, no, this is the This is the bath. It just, it got old. I mean, there were some social pressures going on down there, too. The, the street, the street really changed from when we moved there in terms of demographics and all of that. Yeah. Yeah, there was some of that, no question about it. So, so we're, we're very glad that we moved. We've got a beautiful yard and plantings and, you know, the kinds of things that we call our own. It's, it's neat. It's going to be a great, definitely a good idea. Yes. Only a few houses up. No. Oh, no kidding. What, what number? Okay. Two guys. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I know, I know where Maureen lives, so I know yeah. that where you mean that. <laughs> now, we've met the people uh, around us, and they seem very nice. There's a, 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 a Carol and Tom Wall who live uh, right next to the parking lot of the Baptist Church, but on off of Man Line. She actually was uh, a teacher of my son. High school. So that was a nice connection. And then the woman across the street is a, an English teacher at Marshfield. So, you know, it's it's a nice neighborhood, it really is. So we've had wild turkeys so far, we've had coyotes. So there's plenty of wildlife wandering down through the Ellis property, I guess. I've been with them down on Cedar Point for the last six weeks or so. Uh, and there's coyotes all along. In C on Cedar Point? Yeah. Wow. Right. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. 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 You like the rain. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Like the turf needs some light coming through. Yeah. Yeah. This, this one needs a little light. So, like, once it's like a little sample in the building, then we'll know, like, this, you know? Yeah. 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 They have to come up with something so these guys can get in their apartment. They have that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don, I know that. Which was. Um, Don, the other thing is, I know that you're willing to. I mean, as soon as possible. I can go with this. Yeah, whatever. But I'm going to do it like this. That's the best time to be done for quite a while. Don't discolor the whole thing. I mean, please wait. Yeah, yeah, this is the yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah
the left side that you're facing the corner. Mm -hmm. So that awning's just going to be on those two sides? Yes. Mm -hmm. And what else do we but need? screening all the way around. Right. Except you, you really can't, um, I've got the picture of the back here somewhere. You really can't do the back very well because that's the, 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 back the, the, yeah. the, um, no, the back is yeah. the back. Yeah, so it's going to be the three sides yeah. for the, yeah. yeah. Right. And then the back side, the light will be minimized because it will be exposed. So minimize the amount of lighting, whatever you need for safety. But, yeah. Um, Sounds good. Now the question is, how long, how long will it take you to put that together? Suppose we'd like 90 days. Just to, 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 to be, yeah, I didn't find out the delivery of the audience. Just to make sure what, what we order would be dead. Uh, uh, you guys are not ready for a long time. Okay. So what we, we'd look to do is we'll, we'll work with Neil to get you an occupancy permit from... Which would start from when we get the temporary. Yeah, we get a temporary permit that would right. give you yeah. for 90 days. As soon as possible. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you, could, you could issue that tomorrow. Yeah. But the question becomes is, so we'll talk with Neil about issuing the occupants permit, looking to have that done, um, and then ask him to issue it for 90 days, and then it'll be reviewed as to whether it will be continued or permanent, you know, full occupancy for 90 days. What else do we need to decide? Um, what do you want to do about the sign in terms of them coming back? You want to have like another whole meeting on just the sign, or can the design review look at the sign, or seems to me like can we colors, look at the sign? If they just do colors that complement the other colors, I mean that's my main concern. Yeah, let's have it come back to have the design. I guess from the board standpoint, we want it to be coordinated with the with everything else, and I'll let you work with design review to come back up and. Design review and plan. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I, I just have a question about the 90 day. If, if it doesn't, you know, if it's not achieved in the 90 days, what, what happens? I'm not just. I think it's a temporary sure. occupancy permit mm -hmm. to the extent that that's only good for 90 days. At the end of 90 days, if he doesn't do the awnings and everything else as we've just agreed to, then in effect he loses his occupancy permit and he's closed. So he'd have to actually close. He has a wonderful machine that's full of water that doesn't make ice. He's allowed to sell warm water. <laughs> okay, I just wondered, I just didn't understand yeah. the, the. So that's the reason for the temporary. Mm -hmm. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let you open for business for 90 days. If everything's done, you're good to go. And if not, I will be we'll acting like this as quickly yeah. as possible. I mean, Do you want me to go over all this stuff again just to make sure we have yep. it? Okay, uh, the fabric for the awnings is going to be the navy sombrella. The bollards are going to be painted as close as possible to match. Um, the awnings are going to have the ends open. They're going to have a flat edge, uh, not, not scalloped. Those ends are going to be open on two sides. Underneath, they're going to be two four-foot light fixtures. The body of the building is going to be um, Benjamin Moore HC45 Shaker Beige. The trim would be HC88 Jamesboro Gold, it's called, but it's, you know, that one there. Um, the approval doesn't include approval of the signs. The banner, that top part, is going to be on three sides, except the back. And the, um, there will just be safety lighting to the back. The awnings are going to be on two sides. Um, there will be, you, you're recommending that Neil issue a temporary occupancy permit for 90 days, which will be reviewed um, prior to the end of the 90 days. Yeah. Okay. We'll probably review it at 60 days to see what it is. Okay. That's 60 so days. One thing though about the back on color again, that the gold? Jamesboro gold. Yeah. That's not a, I don't think that's, that's a definite, is it? If we just did a darker color, but not darker like that, but not the, if it has a little bit more, that has a little bit more um, yellow in it. You, 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 you don't like that color. Laura, Laura suggested we make this three times darker and show her a sample. Yeah. But I think we want it finalized, right? Yeah, I'd rather just finalize tonight. Yeah. So we're okay with that. Do you have a particular reason not to just Sorry. finalize it? Do you not like Is there a reason you don't like that? Laura wants to see it on the wall. Well, I, I don't want to get painted, so I'm just, you know. I think we might be overdoing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it's not it's not it's not a regular color. It would be three shades dark. Right. So there's no right. Color. I know so that's that's kind of the safe way to do it. Yeah. Kind of how I usually my yeah. do it. 
Um, but I mean, whatever. You could put it. You could put it in the wording. Why would you do this? Three times instead of providing color. specific color. It's you like, want it three shades darker you than. You could do two or three shades darker, but. Three shades darker than the shaker beige. That's how it should be worded. Okay, so instead of the James Burrow yep. gold, it's going to be um, a color that'll be uh, two to three shades darker, darker or three shades. Do, do we just want to say three shades darker? Three shades. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Three shades. Three shades darker. Because yeah. that'll work. Whatever that means. It'll work. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to miss this. step too much. And Laura, we stated that the bollards would be the color of the awning. Yeah, yeah. we yeah. did. We said that up at the beginning. Yep. Okay. Something so like moved. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Go forth and prosper. Good luck. Thank you very much. Go forth and thank you. And then you the sign, you'll come back up when you coordinate your sign, you bring it back to Laura and she'll bring it back to the designer. Pardon me, sorry. The sign. Yep. Right, when you have a proposal for the sign and right. how that's going to coordinate it. Yep. Then bring that to Laura, we'll set up a meeting with the designer and do it. Okay. Yeah. Great. Great. Okay. Great. Nice okay. job. Cool. Nice job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So those of you who are on the design review committee, when you have your next meeting, will you tell them for us? Thank you. Sure. We, we really appreciate the, the time. That's for the time. You got two yes. thirds of them right there. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. two out of three. <laughs> it's only one other. It means in Syracuse, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, Don. Thank you for your willingness to work with us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's been it's really yeah. nice. Thanks, Thanks, enjoyable experience. Like you may never do another ice house again. Certainly on the pro now, you can just roll this out. This is the new platform. Yeah. Yeah. What I was going to do is you contact them and sit there and say, for a slight fee, if I will, you know, I will sell you my design and that you can put on other ice houses. Right. Right. Okay. You know, it is. It becomes doing what it is because it's standing alone. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, sure often these stuff, buildings are adjacent to another building. Yeah, yeah, that's our meeting. Yeah, yeah. Not the same. Yeah. But I appreciate your time and your effort. Okay. Thank you, for everybody. Seeing as the Blossom Street was accepted at town meeting. Oh, okay. You going to do a booth Yeah. Okay. Uh, move to uh, refund the balance of the surety of $1,800 plus accrued interest for the Booth Hill Estate Subdivision at the request of John Yelanowski, developer, as Blossom Street was accepted at the annual town meeting, April 11, 2011. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Right. Are we going to do a master plan or are we going to do a We've the master plan at the <laughs> I think that's so well, no, I'm off now, so I wouldn't be a form anymore. <laughs> what we will do is we will not discuss the, the master plan at this, this time. What I'd like to do is we've got Walnut Tree Hill. Well, we, so we, we can or we can. Well, let's just, okay, you let's want to do, do that real quick? Yeah, all right. I'd like to do that. Okay. I recuse. Okay. I think we're headed out after the meeting. Okay. I recuse myself permanently. I'll wait in the hallway. <laughs> So what do we have? Okay, we we had a pre-bid conference this morning with John Chessia, Travelers representatives, and a couple of contractors that we really hope are interested in bidding on the job. There was one of them that said, you know, that seemed like it was not going to really work out for him, but at least one seemed really quite interested in it. They were struggling a little bit because some of the things that John Chessia likes to do were really over and above what, what other towns ever do. Um, the main one being when the, um, um, when the base and the sub-base come in, the, um, whether they're, well, bank gravel, I guess, has, has more issues than, um, you know, than gravel that they purchase. But um, he wants to test it on site as well as testing it at you know the gravel pit or wherever right. it comes out. It seems like a really good idea. They just had a lot of issues with it. So hopefully they can see their way through that. But they're um, you know that's what the meeting was about and hopefully within about three weeks, three to four weeks we'll have a settlement agreement for you guys to to sign. And what time does the bidding period close on it? I think um, I think it's going to be within about two weeks. 
So the intent is to basically close the bidding, then come back and use that number, that contract as part of the final settlement. Yeah, yeah, it's all going to be tied in with the settlement. Yeah, and the contractor is going to sign the settlement agreement also. So, would work ideally to commence immediately following the signatures. And they're looking well, to start this. town council wants the selectmen to sign it also, which means it's got to get on the selectmen's agenda. But I'll be trying to get that going, um, you know, as soon as they sign it. So that's that. Thank <laughs> you.